Ish my pal, Bethany Davis Seed Emma, Bethany Davis here. Some of you might recognise me from TikTok, if so, Shamai. I have been a content creator online, on social media, specifically TikTok now, for over three years. Shining a light on Welsh culture, promoting the Welsh language, and of course, discussing the key elements of Welsh history. I discuss an array of subjects, yet the one that always backs to be it without fail is the subject of Welsh independence. Besides the usual arguments of too small, too poor, too insignificant, the one comment I continue to receive daily is the notion that Welsh independence is this new, novel concept. The invention of far left wokeism, right? The byproduct of bored snowflakes without a cause. But what these people don't realise is that independence in Wales is not a new, nor is it a novel concept at all. It is not the result of a world gone mad through a global pandemic. It is not the latest trend, current and fashionable today, only to be replaced by another trend tomorrow. The Welsh have always fought for their liberties and freedoms. History tells us so. From the conquest of Wales in 1282 by Edward I began a tradition of revolution and uprising in Wales. Pris ap Meredith led a Welsh revolt in South Wales between the years of 1287 and 1288. Madog ap Llywelyn did the same in 1294. Llywelyn Bren, Owain Laugoch and most notably Owain Glyndwr all rose armies during the Middle Ages in a bid for independence. Moving into modernity, there is significant social unrest and revolutionary action in Wales. The Rebecca riots, the Merthyr Rising, Newport Rising, all a result of persistent and profound inequalities in Wales. The proletariat versus the bourgeoisie, a historical struggle that is still most relevant today. Such unrest led to what is today known as Brad y Llyfrau Gleison, the treachery of the Blue Books. An inquest into education in Wales during the 19th century, the report found that the Welsh language was backwards. It was holding the Welsh people back and it was a threat to the successful assimilation of Wales into the superior England. Specifically, the Welsh were found to be unclean, wild, unruly, immoral and rebellious by nature. Yet, instead of internalising these characteristics, the Welsh responded by adopting them and turning it into an identity to be proud of. Er wearing. Instead of wild, they were passionate, not backward, but cultured, loyal and proud. An identity that's been passed down generation to generation and has seen the Welsh people through too many injustices. The drowning of Capel Caelin and the Tywerin Valley, the only Welsh monoglot community left in Wales. Thatcherism in the 80s, resulting in employment and poverty. Today's cost of living crisis, 14 years of austerity caused by a government that Wales has never elected in its voting history. We look to the past to inspire change. It teaches valuable lessons, highlights traditions and establishes a historical timeline by which we can track our revolutionary history. In 700 years, nothing has changed. It is the same struggle, the same fight, the same grievances and inequalities. While the semantics might vary, the root of all trouble remains and it will always remain until Wales gains independence. But we are aware in. Proud, loyal, passionate, inspired by the fight of those before us. We are Cymru, always and forever. And we aren't going anywhere. Diolch yn fawr iawn. Thank you so much.